about the mosque that's in Kenowan on uh, Washington Street. And um, if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from. Yeah, I'm Amir uh, Cholakovic. I'm coming from Bosnia. And we came here like 2001. Okay. And uh, like my whole, whole family came to try city here. So you, you and your wife? And, and my father and mother, and uh, in that time it was like only one child. Okay, and how many kids do you have now? Now it's five. And Bosnia, were you in the capacity of a volunteer mom at all there? Uh, no. My father, he used to be mom, you know, like for 25 years in Bosnia, professional. Oh. And then uh, what happened, he became very sick, you know, he had some strokes, and uh, he was, you know, not able to do that anymore. You know, and then uh, when we came here, you know, like uh, my belief was, to be honest, you know, like not so, was like very weak, you know. You know, like I, I didn't practice so much like I'm practicing today. Okay. And uh, like uh, seven, eight years ago, you know, I started to practice more. And uh, uh, we came with the idea, okay, why we don't open something, you know, to teach ourselves and uh, to teach our children, you know, about the God and, uh, you know, what is our belief and all these things. Uh -huh. yes, and we start our activities, you know, praying like five times a day and, uh, you know, like teaching our children, you know. So now you are the imam, but more of a volunteer. Yes. You don't, you really don't get paid. And I'm assuming from your collection jar here, you're just uh, collecting money here in the store to help pay for the mosque, for the mortgage. Yes. Okay. So about how We don't many have any favorites? other help, you know, like, uh, from any, any any other people, you know, just yeah. not like a doing... Christian denomination where you have money yes. from headquarters or something. You're all on your own. Yeah, and, and you don't. You know, like our community from... here is like not, not rich. You know, this is mostly at your mosque, mostly Bosnian families and Somalis, maybe. Uh, mostly, like in the beginning, was the Bosnian. Okay. And then uh, Somalis, they start to come to this community. You know. And you know, like the Islam is open for everyone. Yes. You know, like we don't okay. have like you know like a different group or you know, uh, in Islam like uh, we call each other the brothers. Okay. Doesn't matter you know if you are you know like from Somalia or from Bosnia or any other countries. You know, like uh, it is not you know good to treat anybody you know differently. Okay. You know? Even even the other group, other you know like Christians or you know Jewish or you know we have to treat them nicely and yeah. you know. O oh, you who have believed, do not take the Jews and Christians as allies. They are in fact allies of one another, and whoever is an ally to them among you, then indeed he is one of them. Indeed, Allah guides not the wrongdoing people. And uh, I need to pray like five times a day, and to go, go like 20 minutes there and 20 minutes back is a lot of time, you know, spending just go back and forth, you know. And we didn't have any intention, you know, to separate us, you know, from the rich land. Still, we are, you know, going there like uh, every every year, two, two times, you know, like we pray together there, you know, like and a lot of people they are going from here and taking their children there to, to you know, to, uh, for the schools, you know. Okay. And you know, we we, we didn't have any intention yeah. to separate ourselves or you know, and uh, I I'm, I mean like who right now live here in, in Kennewick. You know, we don't have like uh, so much sources from the people. They are, you know, the rich people. They can, you know, help us. You know, to to build bigger, you know, okay. church and you know the masjid and, 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 and so a, about how many um, families or members? I'm not sure how you count it. If it's just per person or families or how you do that. But about how many people do you have at the mosque here in Kenwood? Uh, you know, like. Uh, Right now, you know, like uh, we don't have like some kind of membership, you know, like uh, maybe like few are members. They are, you know, we call them uh, whoever pay regularly every month. You know, he's like he say like he's the member, you know. Okay. And then you know that doesn't matter if somebody pay or not. You know, help you know like for the masjid, you know, to pay the mortgages. To what pay you the say, mortgage you know? and the bills. Still, they are welcome to come, and you know, you know, doesn't matter. You know. Okay. Everything is voluntary. Everything is according like the how much is from your heart. Okay. Do you think that just out of your opinion or what you think the Quran says, do you think that that women even in the U.S. should be covered? 
you know, like uh, we cannot uh, force anybody. You cannot force anybody. You know, the, the, in Quran, the one, uh, the ayah, one verse is saying, you know, like it is no force in religion. You know, we cannot force anybody to do anything. You know, everything is according like their heart. You know, we cannot force anybody to believe in God if if he is not willing. You know what I mean? Okay. We need to talk to somebody and uh, tell them what is the Islam. You know, okay. not force anybody. You know according anything you know and uh, I can tell you the story about myself mm -hmm. when I talked to the one pious man you know, and uh, I saw him he have like big beard you know and uh, I tell him you know like I didn't know so much about the beard and this and that you know and he was telling me you know like um, I tell him now it's, it's time I, I need to grow beard he say like don't worry about that listen to your heart your heart will tell you when you need to grow beard and same thing with the people, the sisters, you know, like the, the women with the hijab. Uh -huh. We don't force them, you know, it is their choice, okay. you know. Even as your own daughters? Even as my own daughters. Okay, if, you're just, if your daughter, when she grows up and she's 25 years old, if she doesn't want to be covered... I cannot do anything. you cannot do anything. No. Even if she's living in your own home? Yes. You know, like you need to teach them. That is the beauty of the Islam. You know, uh, some people they they represent Islam in the wrong way. You know, mm -hmm. even yeah. even even the, the 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 one verse in the Quran is saying about the Prophet. You know, if you was harsh to the people, they will run away from you. You know, about the they is talking about the Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. You know, and he was very nice to the people. That's why the people, you know, they accept Islam in the groups. Fight against those who do not believe in Allah or the last day, and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and His Messenger have made unlawful, and who do not adopt the religion of truth, that is, Islam. From those who were given the scripture, fight until they give the jizya tax, willingly while they are humbled or subdued. No, like, uh, I have to believe everything what is in the Quran. Uh, you know, if I if I say I don't believe this and I believe that, I'm uh, going out of my religion. You know? I have to believe. You know, like I have a question for you. Like the same thing. If you are Christian, mm -hmm. you know, you like to rule by the your Bible. Yes. You know, yeah. it's the same thing. You know about the, the the Islamic rules. And here in the United States, we have to obey this law. We are in this country. You know. But you don't believe that you could. Some some Muslims believe they want to come to America. And their goal is to turn America to a Muslim country and to turn America into a Sharia law country. I, I don't know, like that is, you know, like that for me doesn't make sense, you know, nonsense, you know, like uh, I mean, like uh, uh, here in the United States we have so much freedom, you know. Uh, myself, I usually I, I pray on the parking lot, you know, and uh, nobody even say anything to me. You know. You know how the Muslims they are praying. You know they go down on the ground. Yes, yes, you know, they have their rug out. And then you know, like uh, I, I was like one time by the uh, the one store here in Kennewick, and then my time was running. I have to pray, you know. And I was praying in the in the in the in the parking lot, and the security guard they came and they say, "What are what are you doing?" You know, I just you know like I have to be focused when I'm praying. You know, I cannot break my prayer. You know, like that. And then he saw I'm praying. And then he stop until I finish, you know. Okay. And then when I finish, he asked me, "What are you doing?" I say, "I'm praying." Oh, I see. I, I, he say, "I'm so sorry, you know, I disturb you, you know." And I mean, like uh, you can see, like, and then a lot of people are coming to me and they are asking me, me about, you know, like, what is your religion, you know. I mean, like, uh, it's it is too much freedom here, you know. You can pray, you can do anything, you know. And then why we have to, you know, like. Uh, I, I cannot understand that some people come from the uh, outside and they have the, the goal to make Sharia country here or something like that, you know. I have no idea like uh, from where, you know, sometimes, you know, like uh, like all these media, they are, you know, like uh, making something very big, you know, it is small, you know. Okay. They are, you know, like uh, putting the, some news, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, they are very small and they make huge thing, you know. Okay. You know. Yeah. And then all they always they pick from the thousands good stuff. They pick like one bad, and they uh -huh. say like, okay, this is 
Islam, this is, you know, like the Muslims, how they think and this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, what, what brought you, I want to back track a little bit on your history, mm -hmm. and what, what was the main thing? Why did you, why did you leave Bosnia and come to the U.S.? Were uh, you, you know, being persecuted or did it have anything to do with that? Yeah, like, uh, first, I, I, I have to go by force, you know, from my home. The, they kick this out. out who's you know. they? Uh, the Serbs. The Serbs, and yeah. they are of what faith generally? They are like Orthodox. Orthodox. Like, yes. Okay, they're not. And, so yeah. it was a, a, a struggle of Orthodox and Muslims? You know, like, uh, I don't know how much you know about, uh, you know, what happened in Bosnia. A little bit. A little bit, okay. Like. I, yeah, you can tell us. You know, like... I, mean, uh, I would rather hear it from you because you were there. Yes, I, I was there, you know, like, uh, what happened, you know, like, uh, the Bosnians start to, you know, to be independent country. You know? Okay. And the Serbs, they didn't like it. You know, they like to have, like, uh, uh, the whole uh, ex-Yugoslavia, you know, one country. You know? The reason why... Uh, they they used to you know like uh, uh, all the money from from everything you know from the industry and everything went to the Belgrade you know the, uh, the 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 capital city okay and they build their their you know like a city they build everything there that's why you know the the, the, the Muslim and the Christian the, uh, the the Catholic they came to, you know together and they like to say okay we are we like to be independent you know? and when we start to be independent then the Serbs came with the army the army was in their hands you know okay. and they came and then start to you know like uh, you know uh, kill the people mm -hmm. you know uh, kick them out from the, their homes, their homes and this and that you know? Uh -huh. you know like and that happened in the in the in the when when some group even the, the the other group you know they become you know stronger they they start to kick other groups too you know what i mean okay yes i mean like most most the wars was from from that group you know you know they have like so much power you cannot do anything you know? yes and then they force you to go out you know to go to the different country and to you know seek for a shelter you know? So and then, even just to live for your family, you had to go elsewhere to be able to survive. If, if you if you don't go out, then they will kill you. Yes, and you so know? you and you, you know like it's like over maybe two hundred thousand people they killed. Killed, yes. Yeah. And uh, so your family left, and did you come right to the U.S.? No, we went to Germany. And how long were you in Germany? In Germany it was five years. Five years. And then uh, government, our government and Germany government, they make agreement that all the refugees, they have to go back. All the if refugees had to leave yes. Germany and go back, to, go to, back Bosnia. to Bosnia. Yes. And then what did you think of that? And then I couldn't go to my home, you know, still. So you I went was back in to the Bosnia, neighbor but city. you couldn't go to your home? No. So what about all these refugees from the Balkans and how does it relate to Islam? In order to wrap one's mind around this, we must go back in history to around the year 1354, when the Muslim Ottoman Turks began pushing north and west into Europe. After the fall of Constantinople in year 1453, Muslims led by Suleiman the Magnificent continued their efforts of expansion into Bulgaria, Greece, into the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The southern part of the Balkans was predominantly Greek Byzantine, while the northern areas were Latin Catholic, with many Jews scattered about among both kingdoms. While Islam was out to make converts, they were even more interested in collecting the jizya tax from these infidels to finance Muslim expansion. With the usual carrot and stick pressures over the years, many conversions were merely a means to avoid these taxes. When the Ottoman Empire began to fall apart in the 19th century, the previous ethnic groups began to rise up to reclaim their previous borders. After several hundred years of intermarriage and business connections, this of course was a very complicated and volatile procedure. Lots of bad blood had passed under the bridge, and few were willing to ignore the nasty history of Muslim occupation. In 1914, the Serbs ended up going to war against their northern Austrian-Hungarian neighbors, 
over border disputes and the fact that Serbia found themselves landlocked. Because of this area being so strategic to world trade with Russians and countries around the Black Sea and its connecting rivers, this drew many of the world powers into what became the First World War. Greek, Armenian, and Turkish ethnic groups exchanged boundaries, and many other ethnic groups, such as the Albanians and Bosniaks, found themselves being pressured out of their homes, creating a sea of refugees in every direction. Many of these unwanted people made their way to Western countries, including America. The danger here lies in opening doors to Muslims whose religion is one of conquest by various forms of jihad. Jihad, which means struggle, is not only a personal struggle over one's inner demons, but a struggle to make Islam the dominant religion wherever it goes. As history has proven, this never ends well, because Islam flies in the face of nearly every Christian biblical doctrine. Their history of Jewish hatred eventually boils to the surface as well. And there's no humor in Islam, and Muslims cannot sit still for someone criticizing their prophet or his religion. The principle of freedom of speech in the West, Muslims can only ignore for so long. When Allah does not deal with the criticism of the infidels, his followers come to his aid to whack them into submission. The Islamic center of the Tri-Cities in Richland puts on a public show of peace and harmony, but when you look at the teaching videos that they have posted on their Facebook page, it's clear they are here to tear down and challenge Christian doctrine and neutralize criticism of Islam. As a Somali come to the U.S., mm -hmm. do you think that we should all go under Sharia law? No, no, no. no. Not, no why, say, why not? No, no. You tell me Bible and Quran is the same. And I say, yes, it's the same. It is not the same. They believe the same thing. No, they, they do not. No, I tell you, they believe the same God. We believe the same uh, 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 direction. Jesus, Moses, David, uh, Muhammad, they are, all they are, from the same They are God. not the same thing. Mm -hmm. They are not worshiping the same God. We do not have to turn toward Mecca five times a day. We can pray to God wherever we are. We can pray in our car. I could pray with my head on the ground. I could pray standing right here talking to you, and I can pray that God reaches in your heart and turns you into a believer of Jesus Christ, the Messiah of the world, that died for all men's sins, that he hung on the cross for your sins as well as mine. And I could pray to God at any okay. time during the day, you not just five times you a day. Me this one. You say yeah. this mosque, right? God loved Muslims that he gave them Jesus. This mosque. The mosque and a cross there in and the front. Cross. So you say it's the same? It is the same? No, it is not the same. What is this? God so, so loved, loved the Muslims, Muslims that he gave, gave them Jesus. Who this God? Well, let's consider what the Quran says about Jesus Christ. In uh, Surah chapter 4, verse 157, it says, because of their saying, they slew the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, Allah's messenger. They slew him not, nor crucified, but it appeared so unto them. Lo, those who disagree concerning it are in doubt thereof. They have no knowledge thereof, save pursuit of a conjecture. They slew him not for certain. Then going down to verse 171 of the same chapter, it says, O people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion, nor utter aught concerning Allah, save the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah and his word, which he conveyed unto Mary, and a spirit from him. So believe in Allah and his messengers, and say not three, cease, it is better for you. Allah is only one God. Far is it removed from his transcendent majesty, that he should have a son. Well, this is a problem. Because whoever wrote the Quran, which came about some 500 years after Christ, claims to know more about the events than the people that were there. For example, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 says, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he began asking his disciples, saying, Who do the people say that the Son of Man is? 
And they said, well, some said John the Baptist, others Elijah, but still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Now notice he doesn't say a son as though there's many, but the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now I've picked up quite a pile of literature over the years visiting mosques around the United States. And uh, it's, it's interesting that uh, the majority of the literature that's published, they try to present a plight rebuke of the Bible and Christianity. But some of it is so obviously an attack on the, on the Christian faith that it can't be denied. They have much disdain for the Trinity. In a tract that they uh, publish, actually it's uh, put out by the Institute of Islamic Information and Education out of Chicago. Uh, I picked, uh, picked up this copy at the Islamic Center in San Diego. It reads, let's put this together in a different form. One person, God the Father, plus one person, God the Son, plus one person, God the Holy Ghost, equals one person, God the what? Is this English or is this gibberish? Well, so because they can't comprehend it, they call it gibberish, as though we should be able to comprehend God. Then on the back panel it reads, Christianity claims to be a monotheistic religion. Monotheism, however, has its fundamental belief that God is one. The Christian doctrine of the Trinity, God being three in one, is seen by Islam as a form of polytheism. Christians don't revere just one God, they revere three. Well, see, once again, they don't understand the Trinity, so they attack it. Christians don't believe that there are three gods. They believe there's one God with three natures. Just as man is made up of spirit, soul, and body, he is only one, he has three different parts. I've had Muslims laugh at me for using that illustration. But I like to say that trying to explain the Trinity to a Muslim is a bit like trying to explain rocket science to a camel. An example of Muslim deception in America is in a tract about polygamy in Islam, distributed in many American mosques. It states that, quote, early Christians invented the ideas that women were full of sin and man was better off never to marry. Since this would be the end of mankind, these same people compromised and said, marry only one. Now the Bible teaches no such thing. Many followers and supporters of Christ were godly women. The Muslim tract claims, quote, that artificially created monogamy has become a factor in ruining the family structure and the social and economic and political systems of the country. Then Mormonism is cited as an example of a Christian group that has supported polygamy, though they fail to point out that Mormonism is actually a heretical cult. The Quran actually gives men the right to discipline any unruly wives. Quote, as to those women on whose part you see ill conduct, admonish them first, next, refuse to share their beds, and last, beat them, and then in parentheses it says, lightly, if it is useful. That's in Surah 4, verse 34. Now usually when you cite these verses from the Quran, the argument is going to be, well, it doesn't really say that quite that way in the Arabic. That's a bad English translation. Well, the English translation that I just quoted from was endorsed by the Chief Justice of Saudi Arabia. The guy was actually the Imam of the Grand Mosque of Mecca for a number of years. It is claimed that suicide bombers are actually outside of Islam because the Quran condemns suicide. Well, actually, suicide bombers consider themselves to be martyrs, which is actually glorified in the Quran. There's a quote supposedly from Muhammad, uh, taken from the Hadith, that claims, I would love to be martyred in Allah's cause, and then come back to life, and then get martyred, and then come back to life again, and then get martyred, and then come back to life again, and then get martyred, unquote.
tell your story. You just mama said, may have heard this somewhere before. Child, don't forget to cover your head. The key to your salvation is in that big black box. It fell all the way from heaven. Might sound like a paradox. Now, if you don't learn some submission, you'll end up dead. Thank you. 